Hello, today we are going to discuss analyzing constraint plans. So what are the objectives of this lesson? After completing this lesson, you should be able to review the build plan to understand plan output, as well as review the GAN chart to understand plan output. In the first section, we are going to discuss the build plan. The basic build plan functionality was covered in the supply planning course. Here we'll expand on what was covered to talk about some additional features that are available in build plan. First, let's do a quick recap. With build plan, you can view material, resource requirements, and supplier capacity simultaneously in the context of demand or supply for an assembly on a time bucketed basis. Use a build plan to configure the layout of analysis to show only the items, resources, suppliers, and measures that are of your interest, aggregated in time buckets such as weeks or months. You can opt to display the individual orders that make up the quantity in any supply, demand, or resource bucket. You can open a build plan in a standalone mode or using the drill to action from another page. When you open build plan in a standalone mode, you must select the desired criteria to see build plan data. When you use the drill to action from another page, the context is passed into the build plan. Here, this screenshot shows an example of build plan of an item. You can expand a selected root node item to see the related items, resource requirements, and supplier items that go into making an assembly item when traveling down the item structure. Or you can see the assembly items that consumes the selected root node item when traveling up the item structure. At the top of this page in the build plan toolbar, we have a field named criteria. This field determines what end item or end items, components, resources, and suppliers are displayed. Another field in the build plan toolbar is layout. The layout field determines which measures and time buckets are displayed. You can also format measures to highlight cells under certain conditions, such as overutilization, as shown here by highlighted cells. We'll go over more details on this feature a little bit later. Please note we won't cover how to create build plan criteria or layout in this lesson. You can refer to lesson six of the supply planning course to get more information how these are created. Here we are showing the build plan user flows. Basically, you have three ways to display build plan data. The first option is this, drill into build plan from another UI and pass either item or resource context into build plan. By default, all items and resources used in the next level down in the item structure are displayed. You can use the configure icon to refine what items, resources, and supplier items are displayed. And optionally, you can save your selection under a named criteria. The next option is to open build plan using the page level open button. 
By doing this, the build plan opens in standalone mode in an empty state. Then you can use the create action to determine what item or resource you want to display as your starting point. From here, you use the configure icon to select the related items, resources, and supplier items that you want to display. And add, optionally, you can save your selection under a named criteria. Finally, the last option is this, open build plan using the page level open button and then select the previously saved criteria. One of the build plan features we'll cover in this lesson is the highlighted, uh, highlight related sales actions. These are a list of predefined actions which allow you to view supply chain relationships of a selected cell. For example, you can select the total demand cell for February 28 and then select pegged supplies to see what supplies are pegged to those particular demands. Related cells are highlighted in a yellow background which takes precedence over any formatting at the measure level. Here we have the list of highlighted related sales actions and what they do. Please note that what action you can perform is dependent on which cell you have selected. And here is the rest of the list. Here is one example where a component was first selected and then the planner chose to highlight substitute components. The cell that is in yellow shows the related substitute component. Now let's discuss the highlight exceptions field in build plan. Well, this field has been around since release 19A, but definitely it's worth covering here because this field does not show up unless you have created a certain type of measure formatting. Basically, it allows you to only display measure formatting when you want to see it. In here, none of the cells have been highlighted with a colored background. But the next slide shows you what happens when resource overload is selected as the exception to highlight. Here, we can easily see the resources that are overutilized in a particular week. Now let's talk about how to configure the list of values to appear in the highlight exceptions field. What you need to do is this. You select the format measures action from the view menu, then select the desired measure, and then check the use override conditional formatting checkbox. Then in the conditional formatting table, fill out the criteria for when the cell should be highlighted. And then instead of using the default value of always for the apply column, choose when selected. And give the conditional formatting a name. This is the value that appears in the highlight exceptions field in the build plan toolbar. What you see here are the new measures have been added to the item measures tab of the manage layouts dialog in order to support process manufacturing. And 
with the addition of the process manufacturing order types and measures, the show details button has been enhanced to show the order types listed here when the user has selected any of the measures shown here. Now we are going to discuss how to use Gantt chart to understand plan output. First, you can use a Gantt chart to view orders and resource requirement durations on a timeline along with the calculated attributes. The Gantt chart leverages the calculate calculated order and resource requirement attributes discussed in the previous lesson. In addition, you can interactively modify the plan dates of a supply or resource requirement using the Gantt chart. Basically, the Gantt chart improves plan explainability by understanding the drivers and root causes for key plan decisions. And it also improves plan productivity by easily visualizing plan output and diagnostic information in the same page. Here we have an overview example for Gantt chart. We have zoom in and zoom out actions, which is used to change the granularity of the time display. Here we are showing what you see in the Gantt chart based on where you're coming from. For example, from supplies and demands, you will see supply orders. And from resource requirements, you will see resource requirements. Here is the list of order attributes that you can display in the left pane of the Gantt chart. As I mentioned earlier, you can use the view menu to show or hide columns. Here we have an important note about the supply bar and resource requirement bar. The supply bars in the Gantt chart span from the suggested start date to the suggested due date of the supply. If both suggested start date and due dates are the same, the supply bar appears as a thin line. The resource requirement bars span from the bucket start date of the planning time bucket that contains the start date of the resource requirement to the bucket end date of the planning time bucket that contains the end date of the resource requirement. Here we see the show diagnostics LOV and its related legend. Basically, you can use show diagnostics to display those diagnostic attributes for orders and resource requirements. And as it's shown here in the drop down list, the diagnostic attributes are contributes to demand lateness, contributes to overload consumption start date, need by date, material available date, earliest start date, and firm. We discussed this slide and the next in the previous lesson. They're repeated here because they're also applic applicable in analyzing plan output using the Gantt chart. Now let's uh, look at the demo of build plan and Gantt chart to understand plan output. First, we start with the build plan. 
As we already mentioned, there are three user flows for build plan. The option one was to drill into build plan with an item or resource context. Here I'm going to build plan from the items page. So I'm selecting an item and drill into build plan. Okay, so here if I select a build plan, it is going to come up with the build plan. I have already done this and the build plan is showing in here. Next step is to configure our build plan, which is selecting related items and resources. To do that, click on the configure build plan icon, which is right here. Now we save the content of the build plan using the criteria field. So you can select this and select the items, resources, and then after you do that, you can select uh, the criteria field and save it under a name. Here I have saved mine under demo curriculum criteria. Next, you need to define layouts which determine the measures that are displayed as well as the time buckets. To do this, select one predefined layout or define a new one by clicking on the manage link here. I have already uh, defined one and is weekly bucket, so I have selected the weekly bucket right here. As I mentioned uh, earlier, you can also format measures to highlight cells under certain conditions, such as overutilization. What do you need to do this? You select the format measures actions from the view menu. Then select the desired measure. And in this case, I'm gonna select the overutilizations and I already have done that. I'm gonna show it to you here. Overutilization, resource overutilization. Then you have this uh, section down here, the table for conditional formatting. Okay, when you select the resource utilization percentage, you need to check the checkbox, use override conditional formatting. Then you come down here and you select this uh, uh, row here, and then the condition that I have defined here is greater than because I want to find the utilization percentage that overutilized. And then I want to put the value 100, means when its resource utilization is greater than 100%. There are other things that I need to do here, you know. I'm gonna select a color. So basically when it's over 100%, it's gonna show it with a color. I've selected already a color orange here. And as I mentioned earlier, you always, uh, you know, is the default. You have to replace that with the when selected. So in the apply column, I replace the always with when selected. The last thing is this, that here I give it a name. The resource overload is the one, uh, the name that I've given to this conditional formatting. Okay, this resource overload is gonna appear basically in the build plan 
highlight related sales actions. Okay, so I've already done this. Okay, so the, in the highlight uh, exceptions, I have the, should have the resource overload that I just defined for conditional formatting here. Okay, so if I do the resource overload, check this one, it should show the resources uh, that are overutilized with the color orange. And these are the overutilized resources. Now I'm removing that. And the other thing that I mentioned, it's basically uh, one of the build plan feature is highlight related cells. For example, you can select a plan order cell, let's say for uh, February 4th here, I select that one. And then from these list of related cells, I select pegged upstream supplies. So now you see what supplies are pegged to this particular planned order. I'm going to refresh this. Another example I want to show you is this. Select a plan order cell that are, is in January uh, 28. This is the plan order. Now this time I'm going to go to related cells and I'm going to select pegged end demands. So now shows the end demands that are pegged basically to this planned order. Now let's uh, continue with the GAN chart. One way to access the GAN chart is from supplies and demands page. So here I have a, a items page and from items page, basically I'm uh, uh, drilling down to the supplies and demands. And when I do that, I get my supplies and demands for the selected item. Now, this is the item GBSP Gantt, and there are two components here. I'm highlighting these three lines, and from here, I can drill into the Gantt chart. And the GAN chart is going to show in the bottom panel of this page. Okay. And to see my uh, order uh, based on the dates that I have here, uh, January 23rd, and uh, you know I know that's in the future, so I'm going to uh, move the cursor to the right so I see the order. And we said the duration of this order is like, you know, here is 60. The order quantity shows here. And then also we talked about the show diagnostics LOV and the attributes that you can see on this uh, uh, Gantt chart. For example, you can see the consumption start date. Let's see that one, need by date, material available date, latest start date, and its earliest start date. 
okay and to understand these uh, uh, milestones you know you have the legend down here Here in the Gantt chart, you can reschedule this uh, order by uh, using these arrows in the toolbars, left arrows uh, uh, basically move in and uh, move out, you know, basically like this. You have to uh, select the, uh, uh, as it said, you know, you select the uh, uh, bar and then uh, you, move it in or move it back out or also interactively you can select and drag and drop it now uh, i'm going to gantt chart uh, from resource requirements to do that i'm going to go back to the supplies and demands and then drill to the resource requirements page. You know, I have to select this uh, three uh, lines here, the items and its components. And then uh, from here, I can select the resource requirements. And I did that. And then uh, when I do that, uh, I get the resource requirement page for those uh, three lines. And these are the resources that I have, uh, the resources uh, two, three, and six. And now from here, also, as we, I mentioned earlier, from the resource requirements, you can go to the uh, Gantt chart, which shows now the resource bars, the resource requirements bars. So basically, uh, I uh, go here. Uh, and uh, here I select also drill down to the Gantt chart. And this time, you know, basically you see the resources, you know, that you have up there, R2, R3, and R6, and the resource hours. And these are the uh, resource requirement bars. And uh, it shows the duration here. Now here, I'm going to go to again here the diagnostics, show diagnostics and select the contributes to overload. So uh, we have to refresh the uh, page to see the uh, bar again. Here I can see there are two resources uh, here that I have. For example, as I see here, R2 and R6 are flagged, the red flagged, and this is the legend that you can see down here contributes to overload. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna solve uh, this overload problems by uh, going to the resource plan and then uh, basically uh, in the resource plan, I'm gonna see what is the overutilized uh, uh, you know, amount and uh, see if I can add more availability there. To go to the resource plan, uh, you can uh, select this uh, uh, related uh, resource requirements bar and do a right mouse click here and uh, uh, basically, uh, okay, let's uh, select it and then uh, right mouse click here, resource plan shows uh, here and you can select it from here and go to the resource plan. This is the default resource plan. 
Okay, and then other way that to go to the daily resource plan, if you have already configured a special resource plan that you wanna see uh, and all the formats is uh, basically saved, you can do that by going to the uh, open button here and I'm gonna open it in the top panel and uh, my special resource plan, uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, GB resource plan. I uh, already have opened it, you know, here. And this is the resource plan that I have. If I look at this uh, resource plan and look at the R2, uh, I can see the uh, uh, overutilized, uh, basically, resource, the percentage here in uh, January 21st. Uh, and so I can see if I have enough uh, availability so I can add to this, so to resolve this issue. Okay, so let's uh, do that and then select the, uh, this 600. Uh, I add another uh, 200 here. And when I do that, you know, the next step would be to go ahead and uh, uh, save this. And then uh, I, I was going to add another actually 200 here, you know, so uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, I'm short here, uh, basically resource utilization. I uh, just uh, need to actually go by uh, uh, 600 here to uh, fix that problem. I just replaced it with 200. Now I should uh, have uh, enough, you know, let me save it again. Okay, so I think that the uh, uh, resource requirements is 806, availability, we have eight. Okay, I need uh, actually uh, uh, to add this thing, you know, here to uh, 900, you know, basically, so to save it. And then the next step would be, uh, uh, we have the actions and uh, then we're going to recalculate. So the, let's do that. Okay, so the recalculate is done and then uh, we're gonna see basically the results. Okay, so uh, after uh, uh, recalculating uh, this uh, uh, utilization and uh, you know, availability that we added there, we see that you know, in the resource plan uh, we added uh, uh, resource availability for R2, and the, now the resource utilization is down from like it was uh, overutilized, now it's only using 89%. And the uh, same thing, we refresh the screen here, we see the red flag for this uh, resource is uh, uh, basically uh, it's uh, not there anymore, uh, you know, and the uh, uh, we have solved the overloaded uh, uh, resources here. 
just uh, want to mention uh, this is a constraint plan and these are that are overloaded are non-bottleneck resources. So uh, what you should have learned in this lesson are these, how to review the build plan to understand plan output, uh, also how to review the Gantt chart to understand plan output.